okay, well, around 11 and 12, um, I finally started getting into the criminal justice system. Mm -hmm. So at the age of 11 years old, I get put on juvenile probation for uh, breaking into an elementary school, stealing uh, some carbon tools, some violins, and some pizza coupons. And you remember like those pizza coupons, if you read a lot of books, you can go to Pizza Hut. I don't know if they do it out in New York, but anyway, you can get these pizza coupons if you read like five books in a week or in a month, you get a, a coupon and you can go to Pizza Hut and get a personal pan pizza, right? So we didn't have much food or money so I was always hungry. So we broke into the school just to steal the pizza coupons. So every day I would go to Pizza Hut to get these personal pan pizza. So the manager of the Pizza Hut called the police and said, these kids are not stellar students. They can't be getting these coupons every day to eat, right? So an investigation was <laughs> taken and they realized that we were the ones that broke into school not because we wanted the burgerize, we just wanted those coupons. Mm -hmm. And so by me stealing those coupons, I got busted and I got stuck on juvenile probation. And so while I was on probation, it, my brother had already was living with different families and people would always take my brother in because back then, if you're a half breed, you accept it a lot easier, mm -hmm. you know, and people liked him because he was pretty and things like that. And so different places that my brother would stay. I could go over there during the day and play, but when night falls, I had to leave because we don't got enough food for you. You can't stay here. You can come hang out, but you can't stay. So it's always like a, that division between me and my brother because I was not good enough. Mm -hmm. So I always stay with my mom. So now this is when I start my entrepreneur spirit. I didn't call it entrepreneur back then. It was called hustling. So I would sell candy door to door every day after school. I'm in seventh grade. So I would work for this Spanish guy and we would sell candies from this organization called West Texas Teens. So for each box of candy, you would get a dollar bill. So every day after school, I would sell 20 boxes of candy. So I was making about $100 a week, Monday through Friday. So I would carry all my money with me to school and word got around that's Tiki selling candy. Automatically, they think you're selling drugs, right? Because they, So they called me to the principal's office and they said, man, how are you making all this money? I said, I sell candy. And they said, well, who, who do you sell it for? And I told them it's a Spanish guy named Eddie. And uh, they called my probation officer and they said, well, Tiki's flashing all this money in school. We wonder where he get it from. He said he's selling candy. So my probation officer comes to the school and uh, after school, they attack this guy that I work for, thinking that he's a drug pusher. So they ambush his van and they find out it's just actual candy that we're selling for this guy. So my probation officer named Gary Speed, he says, Tiki, you can't do this. Uh, where's your mom? And I said, Gary, how many days in a week it is? He says, seven. I said, well, I work six days a week selling candy. But I said, more importantly, out of that seven days a week, I might see my mama two times. So I need this money to take care of myself. And he says, well, you can't live by yourself, Tiki, because I was basically living alone. He said, let me do some checking around. I'll get back with you. And so this was the first time I got placed in a boy's home. So I got placed in Buckner's Boys Home, group home for boys at the age of 12. And so that was the first time in my life I had a stable place that I could call home. It was a boy's home with eight other boys. I shared a room with another guy. And that's when my life started to get a little bit better because I had some, some stable, some stableness. But the truth about this, it was a blessing for me because I didn't have to go to Dallas. I didn't have to go to Lubbock. I didn't have to go anywhere else because the boy's home was in Odessa. So my whole dream was playing football for the Odessa High Broncos. And so I didn't have to leave to do that. It's incredible listening to this story. Mm -hmm. Most people, uh, mm -hmm. if they get sent to a boy's home, they get sent to any type of home at that mm -hmm. age. That ain't a good thing. Yeah. That ain't something that they will look back on and say, 
it was a good thing for me. It was the first time I had ever had stability. This was yeah. the first stable home that I've ever lived in. Right. So to be at that young age and to have gone through all that you went through, mm -hmm. and now you're living in a home for boys, mm -hmm. and for you, it's just home, finally. Yeah, it's, it's just home because it, it started giving me structure because you knew you was going to go to the same place every night. And you knew, like, you know, you hear a lot of guys throw around mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, my mindset was strong at that age or even before that. All I needed was a chance. All I needed, like, because I already knew how to make money. I already knew how to hustle. Now I'm coming to a boy's home where I know I'm going to have three meals a day. I'm going to have Christmas presents. My mom can come visit me if she wants. I get to go to the mall. I get $8 a week allowance. All that was icing. I had the cake. I was the cake already. I just needed icing. So I started understanding at an early age, all I needed was an opportunity. And so that boy's home at that time was an opportunity to live. You know, How long did you live there? I lived in that particular boy's home for three years. Okay, and so you lived in that particular boy's home into high school. Yeah, from 12 to 15. And so at 15, this particular boy's home in Odessa was going to close, right? And so my probation officer came to me and says, all right, Tiki, I got good news and bad news. And I said, all right, well, what's the good news? He said, the good news is you get to stay in the boy's home. But the bad news is you got to move to Lubbock, Texas, where Texas Tech University is, and it's about two hours from Odessa. He says, they got a boy's home over there. This one in Odessa is closing. And I said, no, I can't move to Lubbock. And the reason why was, I tell everybody, is because I wanted to play football for the Odessa High Broncos because being a football star was my first dream. But the truth was, I didn't want to leave Odessa and leave my probation officer. Because now he's been with me from 11 and he was my first father figure. Mm -hmm. And he was looking out for me. So I was afraid to leave him. So like he did when he placed me into the, uh, into the boys' home, he said, let me do some checking. So the director of the boys' home, his name was Danny Watts. He had a twin brother named Sam Watts, which is, they're both white. And he came to me one day, him and my probation officer says, hey, my brother, my twin brother has an extra room in his house. And I would hate to see you go live with your mom on the streets because that was the only other option. Go back with mom on the streets. We, we seen you this. We, we, we saw the change in you like no other boy. We want to help you. And my brother said he has an extra room in his house and it's yours if you want it. So I went from the boy's home now living in a house with white people. You know, and so this ain't a blind side story. These people weren't multimillionaires. They wasn't rich. My stepmom was a convenience store clerk at like a 7-Eleven or, you know, a uh, stop and go. She was making maybe $10 an hour. My stepdad sold used cars. So the household together was probably making $40,000, $50,000. And they had four kids of their own bringing this black kid in, you know. What's up guys, thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video, truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.